Hello everyone, this is Shinami, Shinami EBA, and I'm here to start a new series of tutorials about UST making. A while ago on Utaforum, utaforum.net, I proposed making these tutorials and they were met with a fair amount of, yeah sure do it. I tried to a couple weeks ago, but something got corrupted in the data, it failed, and plus during the whole time I was really just flailing about wondering what to say. I'm not a very good person at explaining things, I just sort of learn and do them. So what this series should consist of is three videos. This first video will be about the basics, things that maybe not every person who just got into Utah would know, things most people probably do know, the basics. The second video, I will actually start explaining my process of making USDs, what I like to do, other methods, and then I will probably actually work on a UST for 10 minutes. Learn by observation. Stop doing that. <clears throat> the third video will probably just focus on harmonies. A lot of people seem to have trouble with harmonies. It's more so an issue of having a good ear for them, but I'll try and give as many advice pieces as I can. So, we are going to start. What is a UST? A lot of people just getting into Utao may not understand that. Well, whenever Utao sing, they need to sing a UST. As you can see, Utau Sequence Text. That's what UST stands for. You have to open a UST file. So, you probably downloaded a few USTs if you're just a beginner. So, let's go open one and show you what USTs look like. Sorry for people who probably don't want to noobishly go over all this, but we are. So often USTs, nowadays at least, will come in multiple forms, at least by the nicer people. There'll be CV versions and VCV versions. If you're just starting a Tau, you've probably done a CV bank, open up a CV version. If you have, a, if you have more knowledge, you probably know which one you want to open up automatically. And then again, some people only provide one version of their UST. I know people who only release USTs in CV Hiragana. Let's just open up a VCV UST. Now you'll instantly see, if you were in mode 2, generally when you first open up a Tau, it's in mode 1, switch to mode 2, and generally it'll look like little blocks, like this. Go down here to the corner of your Tau, there's this little, I think it's called a tilde, or an asterisk, tilde I think. I said asterisk because I thought it looked like one for a sec. You click that and it becomes these. Generally USTs are in mode 2, now that I think about it. Only the really old USTs are in mode 1. So, you'll see that there are little notes everywhere, with lyrics in them, and these little red lines flying everywhere. <clears throat> these are the components of a UST. Now, let me just check my little outline. Oh, okay. So, one thing of USTs that pe you don't generally start to notice until you start to make USTs is tempo. Tempo is this little yellow box up here. It's how fast the song is going. A fast song will have a faster, higher number tempo than a slower song. Tempo is highly important because without a correct tempo, you cannot place notes correctly. Stop saying that. <laughs> Anyways, so, next point. Notes. As you can see on the side, C6, C5, C4, C3, you may be wondering, what are those? They are octaves. These are all the notes. C5 is the exact same thing as C4, but it is an octave higher. I would play a sound sample right now, but I just remembered that I can't. Because I had to find a way to hook up the sound to Camtasia better. I can't figure it out currently. So I'll figure that out by the second video, so you can actually hear me do USDs. Well, C4 is exactly the same as C5, but it just sounds different. That's why people say when you're using UST, you have to shift it by 12 notes. If you just move it up one or two notes, your song is now off key. If you moved it up 12 notes, however, it'd just be the exact same song, just higher by 12 notes. If you put it down lower, it'd be easier for a guy to sing, etc. And there are also the words. In VCV, it is these whole hiragana styled multi words, but in CV, it'd just be ha, or is that whole? I forget. Ka, na, i, a. You get the idea. <clears throat> In CVVC English, it's a lot more complicated. In the words, of course, make utau when you have a correctly done oto. If it'll load, there we go. 
It'll make them correctly sing. Next point. Oh, I did also mean to say. Notes also have lengths. This note is much longer than this note. So is this note much longer. That determines how long the Utahs will, of course, sing the note. Pitch bends. Now, these little red lines there. I remember when I first started a toe, I had no clue what they were. I noticed that a note that has more of these red lines will sound a lot different than a note that doesn't have them. Pitch bends determine the pitch. Generally, a note is just on the note that this is placed on. In this case, F4. As you can see over here when you hover over the note. But, let's say you want to have a really sharp sound. Or you want it to be a step up like, you know, ah. Uh, Instead of having to do two full notes, you could just do a pitch bend. It follows the area the red lines go. So what to do to make a pitch bend? You right-click on the note, go down to pitch, and make sure the portamento box is checked on. Gray check doesn't really mean anything. This means it's off. Black check means it's on. From there, you'll probably just get your standard two points. So to make pitch bends, you have to right-click on a point and click add control point. Let's do it over here. Come on, add control point. And then you can move this around. However, when there is no other point at the end or beginning of a note other than the one you're using, you cannot move it up and down. So you have to create another point, and then you could use that up and down. That will move the pitch. You could delete them by doing remove control point. And you could change how the curve looks. It's probably hard to see on my really small screen, so I'll try to make the pitch bend bigger. Ridiculously bigger. As you can see, this looks like a very elongated S. That is why it is called an S curve. You could change it to linear, which is a straight line. R curve, which goes upwards. And J curve, which has more of a downwards. Well, it depends on what you're looking, really. To change these, you have to go to the end point of the change. You can't just go to the first one to change it, you have to go to the last point in this curve to change the mode. Those are pitch bends. They are extremely, extremely useful. Every single high quality Utah cover out there that has realistic sounds is using pitch bends. Pitch bends really, other than note placing and getting the timing of notes right, is the core of USTs. So that will be heavily, probably, uh, gone on in my second video. So, next, vibrato. You should know what vibrato is. It's when people sing, their voice goes, ah. I'm too embarrassed to sing, really, in front of anyone. So, to get those, you go to pitch, vibrato. Make sure the box is checked. Same thing as portamento. When you check it, you'll get this default vibrato based on your tempo. You can move the length around with these bars, and the end bars, well, the first end bar, so you could decide what, how much of the note it'll take up. This little dot here makes the pitch bend go faster or slower, because that's what vibrato is. It's an easy form of a pitch bend, as you can see by the red lines, that's just automated and makes nice vibrato. A lot easier than if you were going to try to make it by pitch bending. This box here, you can hold in the middle of it and move it up and down to make it off-key. It's not used often, but sometimes it can be used well. You could stretch the edges of the boxes to make it more dramatic or less dramatic. Generally, you don't really want too dramatic pitch bends, so try to keep it within the box. And these edges of the boxes can be used to whether to make the vibrato fade out, fade in, however you want. The only thing you can't change is where it ends. It will always end at the end of the note. One of the slight disadvantages of that. That is vibrato. If you want to get rid of it, you could either go to pitch and uncheck the vibrato box, or you could right-click the vibrato box and click remove vibrato. Vibrato is important, but don't overuse it. You can also sort of automate vibrato by selecting a whole bunch of notes, going to vibrato, and editing these settings. With portamento, I never really touched the settings. One new thing you can do is automatically make there be a lot of pitch bends. Maybe you know you're going to do a lot of pitch bends on a note, and you don't want to just have the two to start with, where you're going to have to keep right-clicking and making a bunch of new ones. Here, when you make the portamento, you can click a number, and it will create the points. Other than that, I don't really use the settings. 
So let's go back. When you go to vibrato, you could automate it. Length, that's how much of the note it'll take up. It's percentage. Currently, it will take up only 65% of every note. You can make it take up 100%. Cycle, that's how fast it goes. Generally, 180 is pretty good. I like to make it a little faster. So that'd be like 169, 172. Or you could make it a lot slower. Depth, that's that extremity I told you about. This is an extremely crazy one. This is a much softer one. And when you click, uh, I don't generally touch anything else. And generally when you click it, everything's good. That's what it looks like. I don't generally like auto vibrato, but it can be useful in some situations. I've seen it used well a couple times. It's okay for a bass, I think. And last but not least, there are many little factors to USTs. This should be over very shortly. When you go to Edit Project Property, you see things like project name, some people fill those out, output file name, some people fill those out. Utau, of course, who you've selected, and you should know how to change Utau's in the middle of UST. Flags. Flags depend heavily on the resampler. This tool, too. You will probably never touch tool one unless you have Masao's pitch, uh, Masao's envelope tool. I'll need to talk about envelopes too, I forgot about those. <clears throat> but, if you don't know about that, do not worry about this. Never touch it. Tool 2, resampler. Generally, when you first download and install, Utau and install it, you will have resampler. It is the basic one. However, you can download loads more. Freesamp, tips, BKHO1, yes, uh, tinfins, there's a whole lot out there, and they can change your voice. I will probably link my resampler directory I have on Utaforum for anyone curious who doesn't know what these are. And they basically affect the voice. Resampler, for example, is a pretty standard resampler. It keeps consonants halfway strong. Overall, it's very standard. Freesamp can really strengthen voices, take out noise, but it, it can sound very nasally unless you use certain flags. Tips is really good with soft voices, it, but it can emphasize noise. It all depends on your microphone, what voice bank you're using, and to what resampler you will use. And of course you have to download them first, and then direct Utau to them either using this button, if they're in a weird location, or just typing it in if it's in the same folder as Utau. Now, flags. There are many, many flags. If you are unfamiliar with flags, there are probably many threads out there, or lessons out there that can help with flags. It depends on your resampler. For example, TIPS does not use any flags except for Y, H, and G. You can't use anything else. Resampler pretty much accepts all flags. BKH01 has some specialty flags like A and V. With Freesamp, you want to use an F flag of generally 0 or 1. It all depends. It's an important component of UST. Well, it's a component of USDs. It's not a main component, but it can really impact how the voice sounds. And also, when you right-click a note and go to Property, you see all these things. If yours looks like this, just hit this little purple thing down here. There is Intensity, which is how loud the note is. Generally, most USDs, it is 100. The Lyric, what note it's on, how long it is. Modulation. Modulation is a tricky little thing. It puts some of the original tone back into the sound. If you voiced at a constant pitch 100% of the time, generally you could go up to about 30 modulation, and it could sound pretty good. It'll add that tinge of slightly offness that maybe is more realistic. However, there are some banks out there that maybe voice very inconsistently. You do not really want to use much modulation. And of course, the fun make your Utah sound like a drunk is when you sound when you put it at a hundred or even more modulation. I generally don't like to touch modulation. Leave it at zero. It keeps you perfectly on the note. Pre-utterance and overlap are part of the envelopes, which I'll talk about in a sec. Consonant velocity. This what this does is speeds up in your Oto the pink area. I'm not talking about Otos, so I'm not going to go to the Oto screen. Dear God, sorry. <laughs> and show you that. You should know what that is. But it really helps, especially in VCV. Most people use it with VCV. But you can use it with CV. 
to speed things up if they're slurring. If you took a long time to say your S or your H's, I have a problem pronouncing H's, you might want to use it to speed things up. A hundred is your general note default. You can go lower than a hundred, but that just helps to start create the drunk tau effect. Um, generally, two hundred is something I'd only advise to use really on very, very quick songs. Wawaka songs, for example. I, if I need to speed my songs up, will speed my consonants up a little bit. Like to use between one hundred twenty and one hundred sixty. Depends on the tau. Depends on the song. Generally, I don't touch it unless it is a quicker song. BRE is breathiness. BRE is exactly the same as the B tag, flag, sorry, that you can use in the project properties. Or you could just affect it here on all notes. Never touch this box unless you want your Utah to sound very, very funny. Flags, this is another place to place flags. While in project properties, that is for the entire UST, this could be specifically for one note. If you want it to sound higher or suddenly, you could add a G flag. If you want it to be breathier, add some Y or B flags. STP is also another part in develops that I never touch. I think it is perfect the way it is whenever you establish it. Others, you will never need to click this box in a million years. Okay. So, last thing to talk about, envelopes. You will notice that there are blue lines around the note. When you drag down and up on the box, it lowers the intensity note number which is above them or you can bring it back up and it changes the envelopes what envelopes is is it generally depends on the auto if you're doing cv or vcv well it will have little lines going in and out of the note that helps the notes transition and sing more smoothly it depends on your auto how they look however if you want the note to get louder as it goes on you could drag this up and over time it will get louder. If you want it to get softer, do the opposite. You can have, it comes automatically with four points. And if you notice, some of them, if you move them, it moves the others. So you gotta be kinda careful manipulating. But you can add an extra point by clicking this E up here. It will add a fifth point. Currently in Utah, that's all you could do, five points of envelope. So there is a, yeah, there is a plugin that can change that but I've never really used it before. That is the basics of Utau. Tempo, notes, mode, and envelopes and such. Stop. Vibrato, pitch bends, flags, resepos, modulation, con convel, which is a short word for consonant velocity. Multiple USTs. When you open a UST, maybe there is a multiple USTs in there that aren't just various forms of the same thing. It's because songs have harmonies. What you'll need to do is when you render the songs, when you render WAV file, you will need to put them together. Common sense. So, this kind of went on a lot longer than I expected, and I apologize for that. So that is the basics. Every single thing about a UST that I could think of that is actually important. So, next video I will hopefully start to talk about my style, and then just start pitch bending. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped people.